God bless you. This is Dr. Courtney Pope. This is Pastor Audrey Pope. And you are watching Living Devotions. Yes. Oh, we what a treat it is yes. to have both popes in one <laughs> setting. That is an honor. It is a it's not a miracle. It is a tremendous blessing. Yes. And we are grateful that we could come to you. We are excited because during we have we have a very special teaching for you in three parts. This is our series called Live Your Life Authentically. Yes. Live it for real. Be, be ambitious. Be purposeful. Live your life authentically. Be who you are. That's the Lord just wants to anoint what he's already placed yes, in yes. your life. So live authentically. We're going to talk about relationship. We're going to talk about heart health and we're talking about heritage. These are three main yes. themes that are themes in the month of February. So uh, we are going there and tonight we're going to just deal with one and the next teaching will be deal with the other topic and then we'll close out. Uh, with the third topic. So we are excited. You're excited, Pastor. I am excited. I'm, I'm excited. excited. I'm going to try to keep Just focused. Just to live authentically. And that's what God is calling us to do in this Amen. hour. And it's time to be our real selves. Stop yes. trying to pretend to be something that we're not. So true. If, if this time hasn't taught you anything, it should have taught you to be authentic. So mm. I'm excited about that. And, and God is uh, multifaceted. He's multidimensional. So he can deal with everything from relationship to our physical health. That's and to right. our heritage, that's because true. that's the kind of God we serve. He's layered. Yes. So uh, what he has to offer us is layered. So I'm excited. And we have over 30 years of marriage to help us in teaching this to you. So we are learning from each other. Uh, we're learning Constantly. the do's and the don'ts. <laughs> you know, We learn from our mistakes what not to do. We learn from our strengths. Uh, it may work in that season. You may have to come back and redefine it in another season. Sure, sure. But whatever you have to do to make it work. And these are needed teachings in the body of Christ. So, again, we're not the he's going to fix it teachers. We're not going to talk about what's everything that's wrong in the world, what's wrong in the church, what's wrong with you. Uh, let's just start building up, you know, the ministry of edification. Let's build up. So, Pastor, lead us in prayer, and we could go right into the teaching. That's what people want to hear. Yes, Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this is a day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time of living devotions. We're your Hallelujah. word comes alive in yes. our life. And we just say thank you, Lord God. Bless this series. Bless this teaching that we are about to embark on, Lord God. Yes, Lord, Lord, most of all, we want your power. We want your spirit. We want your anointing. Lord, give the people who are listening, give them understanding, give them clarity, God. Give them encouragement and give them direction. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. Name. Amen. God bless you. Well, let's go right in. Let's go right in. Pastor, you have your notes. I have my little scratch pad and we're going to do what we do. That's what makes it work for us. Um, uh, we're talking about relationship. We're talking about live authentically. So that's the that's the cover theme, the overall theme. But then we have our own little topic. So uh, we want to talk about um, basically being positioned for the right relationship. That's good. Being positioned for the right relationship. I think that's powerful right there. Absolutely. So if you're single, come on, let's take this walk together. If you are engaged, let's take this walk together. If you are married, we're praying for you. Keep walking. <laughs> keep walking. There you are. Keep <laughs> walking. You're married, keep walking. <laughs> All right. So position for the right person. Isn't that what we said? Position for the right person. So we're looking at the there's a book in your Bible, it's only four chapters long, and that is the book of Ruth. Yes. The book of Ruth, and we know a little bit something about Ruth, the average believer does. So let's really go into this, and let's talk about Ruth. I don't know who wants to begin here. Um, I, I will start it off this way. Um, we can start, we, we'll use these three points, Pastor. Number one, the first point will be investment of a lifetime. The investment of a lifetime. Remember, we're talking about relationship. The investment of a lifetime. Then our second point will be the threshing before the blessing. Oh, Not the thrashing, the threshing, the threshing yes. before the blessing. You know, we're preachers too, so some of that got to spill into it. <laughs> and number three, uh-oh, uh-oh, the, the true saints are going to get with this one. But we want to talk about flirting with the right one. Okay. flirting with Good. the right one. Good. And if you can't handle that, you really won't handle what I have in parentheses, 
romance of redemption. Oh, Hiya, yeah. I felt that. <laughs> the romance of redemption. All right, Pastor, I need to sit like this and be more comfortable. I'm not trying to be fresh. Thank I just you. need to be in the shot, all right, because I feel like working right now. So yeah. we're talking about the investment of a lifetime. Let's look some backstory. We and, and Ruth is four chapters, so when you get a chance, we're starting in chapter one. We may direct you to particular scriptures, but we just want to have conversations. So let us look at this. Um, Ruth was married. Ruth, excuse me, Naomi. Mm -hmm. Naomi, that's Ruth's mother-in-law. But it does, the story of Ruth doesn't start with Ruth. Naomi is married to a man, uh, who, and they're both from Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. They're both from Judea. Be Bethlehem, the house of bread in Hebrew, the same little small town Jesus that from. Jesus was came from exactly, mm -hmm. where he was born. And um, there was a famine. Uh, Ruth chapter one teaches us there was a famine in Judah, and that's when the food is not there, and then the crops are dried up. And a lot of times in our Old Testament, we understand that God allowed the famine to be. So there was a famine in Judah. So uh, let's see. Let's look at his name. You will read it here in chapter one, and let's see in verse number two, because verse number one, he's just called a man. <laughs> okay, a man of Bethlehem, Judah. But in verse number two, it says, and the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Kilion. Uh, they were of uh, uh, Ephratites, all right? So Ephraim, mm -hmm. uh, that's part of that tribe, Ephraim of Bethle uh, Bethlehem, Bethlehem Judah. Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. Now, the Bible teaches us that they stayed there for 10 years. Mm -hmm. What happened was they went to uh, Moab, which is really across the Jordan River. They crossed over into Moab. Uh, Moab was not affected by the famine. So here, Elimelech, he wanted to provide for his family. Yes. He had two sons. He had a wife and wanted to provide. They couldn't do it in their homeland or in their hometown. Mm -hmm. So they crossed over and went into Moab. And there they found residence. They found employment. They found food. So they were able to sustain their lives. But they end up staying there 10 years. Tragically, while being there, Elimelech dies. Mm -hmm. Not long after that, Kilion dies. Mm -hmm. Not long after that, Malone dies. Mm -hmm. And so now it's just, no, I, I should have backed up. Both of these sons married, married men, um, excuse me, married women who were Moabitess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they, they married Moabite women. We're just trying to give you backstory. It is Bible study. Right. So they married uh, Moabite women, the one named Orpah. Mm -hmm. A lot of preachers read that. Uh, O-R-P-A-H, and they say Oprah. Mm -hmm. Oprah is spelled O-P-R-A-H anyway. Mm -hmm. But it, they marry Orpah, and the other son married Ruth, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, Ruth and Orpah, they were not Hebrew women. So they lived under Moabite traditions. And uh, at this time, this is before the time of David, so Moab was still a, a pagan nation. They served idol gods. Now, under King David, they became subject. To uh, uh, to Israel, they were enemies of Israel uh, throughout our uh, Old Testament, especially under the days of uh, of uh, 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 Moses. Yes, Moses and Joshua, and into the, in the era of the kings. But at this time, evidently, it was okay for uh, for uh, for Elimelech to take his family into Moab. All right, so they're there. The, the sons are married. The father dies. The two sons die. Now Ruth, uh, excuse me, now Naomi is there with her two daughter-in-laws. Naomi is the one in the strange land. So Naomi lets the girls know, listen, I'm leaving. I'm going back to my people. Uh, I, word is out that the famine is past. I can go back home now. Sometimes, Pastor, we may stay in things too long. It's true. That's true. And we suffer consequences because we stayed too because long. of our decision to exactly. stay too long. Exactly. What if they had went back at another time or never mm -hmm. went? Mm -hmm. You know. That's but true. again, we don't question the sovereignty or the will of God. But what we do learn from the book of Ruth, the story of Ruth, if we, if you will, is that God has a plan. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And even when our plans go in a different direction, God still infuses His plan. So that his will will be done. Absolutely. And also just to um, piggyback off of that, everything about God is about, it, it, with God is about timing. So just like we can stay too long, sometimes we can pre prematurely leave where we're at um, ahead of the time. 
So we need to make sure that whatever we're doing um, and, and what God's purpose is for our life, that we're moving in the timing of God. Wow. What I love about Naomi is Naomi, um, some bad things happened to her when she was in Moab. You know what I'm saying? But we know the end story or the backstory is that she it w does work for her good. But there she was able, she was, she was an amazing woman. The fact that she was there, she went to a strange country. She was among people she she really didn't have any uh, connection or relationship with, but she went, you know, at the beckoning of her husband or following her husband, of course, to do the right thing. And um, there she lost her husband. And then she had to be a widow. Mm -hmm. She had to just kind of grab the mantle of the family and mm -hmm. take care of her sons. She's now a widow. Now she has to make sure the family stays intact. Right, her sons right. get married. They eventually pass. And then she has to kind of hold on to her daughter-in-laws who are now right. her family. Right. So, you know, she kind of had that mantle of having to keep that family intact. Even when things become tragically long, wrong or dysfunctional in that family, there has to be that one person that still has to hold on to that mantle or take up that mantle and say, you know what? Mm -hmm. Through everything, I want to keep the family together. Mm -hmm. I know we've lost a lot, but there's still, you know, we got to hold on to the core of who we are. Right. So I, I really admire that about her, how she kept, you know, her um, being a widow, she was able to keep her sons, you know, keep that family together. Then after she lost her two sons, which was very, I'm sure, bitter to her and upsetting sure. to her because she sure. actually, she said it, you know, God has caused me to be, be bitter, bitter. Mm -hmm. you know, um, but, you know, she still had her daughter-in-laws and she, she kept them. They were her family mm -hmm. and, and she was their family. She was able to keep that family together. Even going when she went back into her own country, we'll see how God made provision for the family name to continue on. And so we well, thank well, God. let's stay right there, Pastor, mm -hmm. because you're mentioning uh, Naomi's role. And mm -hmm. that's where we want to mm -hmm. start mm -hmm. when we're t because we're talking about relationships. So we gave you good spiritual and good biblical background to this uh, story of Ruth. But let's talk about Naomi for a second mm -hmm. before we, mm -hmm. be, and we'll end up with Ruth and Boaz. Mm -hmm. But let's look at uh, Naomi. Naomi d does something here. In, in uh, Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16, Naomi says, uh, she tells, the, well, before verse 16, she tells her two, two daughter-in-laws, I'm going back to my homeland. Yeah. You're in your right. homeland. Right. Go back to your families. Right. Go back to your mothers. Go back to your customs. Right, right. And what have you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Orpah said, okay, mom, nice knowing you. Mm -hmm. I'm still young, mm -hmm. we, we believe. Although she didn't, she didn't immediately. because people. She did not immediately. Like, people, Amen. People, you know, like to just say that she just immediately said, all right, see you, Naomi. Right. Peace out. I'm gone. But she no, did not. It wasn't like that. Correct. She did, you know, she did try to convince, you know. Uh, she Naomi tried to go to along. Her. She did right. go along. She did. And, and, she and, and for Naomi. A while. Really kind of forced her, correct? You know, kind of forced. She her put the pressure on both them. girls. She did. She really did. And Orpa said, "Okay, you, you know, know what? I thought yeah. about it. You're right. Yeah. I'm not ready for this trip. Yeah. Let me go on back." And then, what? What? Uh, in reading that, Orpa, uh, Na uh, Ruth said, "I'm sorry." Naomi said to her girl, to the girls, "Go back to your country. Go back around your kinsmen, and go back to serving your idol gods." And that that kind of stuck out to me because. Orba said, you know, after that last convincing, she was like, okay, I'm going to go. I can't let but, go of my past. Yeah. Wow. I got into a relationship and I just humored my husband right, with right. his with his Jewish mm -hmm. or Hebraic mm -hmm. uh, traditions. Okay, so I humored. But on the side, I probably was still, uh, I believe the idol god of the Moabites was Chemosh. Mm -hmm. so, so maybe under that, I was still serving and worshiping Chemosh. Right. Wow. Right. Good right. point, Pastor. Good then, point. Ru then Ruth, she was like, you know, after Naomi realized she couldn't convince her to go, you know, and then she goes into that beautiful passage of scripture said, wherever you go, I will go. Let's read that. Lie. Let's read that. Yes. So okay. we have it. So Ruth, uh, Naomi, we keep <laughs> using <Yes>. Ruth. Name. <laughs> Naomi urged the girls very strongly. No, go. I'm good. Yes, You're yes, young. My yes. life is, you know, it is what it is. God saw it in his will to make me bitter. You girls. First of all, she's showing good mentorship and motherhood there. Absolutely. Go absolutely, on with your life. That's absolutely. what she's telling them. Go on. Don't hang around the old woman yeah, like this. Go yeah. with your life. She actually went. She actually said to them, you know, it's like, if you stay with me, are you going to wait? I could get married again. I'm really too old. But if it happens, are you going to wait for me to have children? And yeah, that, that's not going to happen. Yeah, up, yeah. You know, for, and then you wait for them. Exactly. And, and so, we know that's the impossible. Yeah. Uh, you know, Naomi was an older woman at this time. So in verse 16, Ruth responds mm -hmm. because Orpah did leave. Mm -hmm. Ruth responds and the scripture says, and Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you. For the for whether you go, wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, where you stay, where you live, mm -hmm. I will live. 
Your people shall be my people. And here's the key. Your God, God my God. God. Yeah. Wow. What, what's amazing about that, Bishop, that, that is a Selah moment right there. Mm -hmm. You know, saying for someone to say, you've like Naomi impressed Ruth's life so much. You know what I'm saying? That she was re ready at the time where she could have been free to go back to her own people. Right. That she impressed her life so much with her mentorship, her mother, her, mm -hmm. her motherhood. Mm -hmm. And the way even I'm sure as being a wife, she was an example. She impressed her life so much how she handled her family and, and her commitment as a woman. Well, let's um, go there again. Go there, Pat. <laughs> go there. Because we're talking about relationship. And, and even before you get into the male-female relationship... Somebody must be mentored exactly. for the relationship. Absolutely. Go, go, Absolutely. go ahead, Pastor. Absolutely. So Naomi was that mentor, and I feel that a roof that roof would not have um, given so eloquently to that um, the sayings that she said if if she was not her life was not impacted and impressed by how Naomi handled everything from losing her husband, then losing her sons. That, that that's a lot to deal with. It Come is. On. It's a lot it to is. deal with losing a husband mm -hmm. or a spouse. But then to lose two, not one child, but two children, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then to feel that you are left and abandoned, but you held on to your daughter-in-law. And, and I'm sure you, she treated them like they were her own because that's why it was so difficult for them to leave her, or at least for Oprah to leave her. But... Ruth was so impacted by Naomi because of her mentorship. And a lot of times we think it's it's all about what we say, what we do in front of the person. But sometimes just live your life. People, It's an example to people. Just do what you are called to right, do. Right, right. Do what you are just, you know what I'm saying? We don't think that. And I had to learn this. And I, um, watching other like pastor's wives and different things like that. You see that how God gave them the ministry of being a mother, mm -hmm. of being a wife. Of just being that stay-at-home mom. We don't think that's a ministry, but it is a ministry. Right. While the husband is out doing what he's doing for the ministry and for God, you know what I'm saying? Um, the wife is equally as important in her role as as ministering as mother, as being, you know, as ministering as being sister, as ministering as being wife first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So that's a ministry as well. So Ruth saw a great example in Naomi, you know what I'm saying? And even though she lost a lot, she still held on to what was the core of her family. So we're talking about investment of a lifetime, investment of a lifetime. We should invest our lives into the lives of others. Absolutely. That causes or produces multiplication. So the legacy, the dream, uh, whatever you have lived that other people admire does not stop when you die. Absolutely, absolutely. That's good. Absolutely. So we should invest our lives into the lives of others. Pastor, that's why we do what we do in the Lord's Absolutely. service, because Absolutely. we're given an investment. Do we get our greatest, uh, what we receive greater is knowing that there are spiritual sons and daughters. Absolutely. There are preachers, pastors now who were saved or come out from under our ministry. And we, we, we don't take the credit, mm -hmm. but we give God all of the Absolutely. glory. Absolutely. That for that time they were under us or with us, I, we serve the God purpose Absolutely. for them. In their life. Absolutely. My God. There was something we were able to pour into their life. And then I realized that sometimes some people's ministry is to be in the trenches with people. And I just feel that that's part of Bishop and our ministry that, you know, maybe we're not meant to be there when they get to the mountaintop, but we're, we're there to, to, to help them dig out the stuff that they to go need, towards to the mountains. From. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And I know that we have done that in many Many a person's lives, and I thank God for that. Well, you know what, what does not, I don't want to cut you off. I just want to hurry up and, mm -hmm. and deal sure. with this. Mm -hmm. But what does the scripture say? Mm -hmm. You know, one plants the seed, mm -hmm. one waters, one waters, and God but God has the increase. Yep. So we're mm -hmm. just for some we were the seed planters. Exactly. For others we were the ones who watered, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for mm -hmm. others they go the distance. Exactly. So to God exactly. be the glory. To God God has a glory. God has a place for everyone. Absolutely. Pastor, go ahead and deal with that. I'm going to look at this scripture right here. I have something. I really want to share. Okay. Go ahead and deal with it. So that. just just to, uh, just rehash about um, Naomi's uh, role, you know, in the life of her daughter-in-laws, or just kind of holding on to the um, the core of the family. And we don't think it's important, but it is important. She was, um, you know, as wife, mother, and mentor. She cared for her sons after becoming a widow. She had to kind of, you know, take up the reins after Elimelech had passed. So she had to take up the reins of of being that matriarch. You know what I'm saying? And, and holding on to her family at all costs. Now that she was a widow, and I'm sure that was extremely hard to do. Then she lost two sons, which 
just, you know, I can't even imagine, you know, um, you know, not having my children, but, you know, uh, God, you know, that's the way her life went. And then she had to kind of hold on. Okay. I don't have my husband. Now I don't have my sons, but I do have these two, uh, young ladies who didn't kind they weren't birthed from me, but they're now a part of me. They're kind of, you know what I'm saying? Um, in my family now, and I'm going to hold on to them because they represent, um, my my sons they represent you know what their family stood for so she was a wife she was a mentor she was a mother you know what i'm saying she was also um um she was the fact that she wanted to at least she cared more about the girls her her daughter-in-laws than she did herself you know what i'm saying i know you know i'm an old lady now that lost a whole lot but you girls have your life in front of you i want you to go back to your families go try to make something of your life you can even find another husband and get married and, and just kind of you know procreate and just continue on your family line but um you know so she you know she was selfless in doing that a lot of times we want we don't want to release people for our own selfish reasons but I, I just see a whole lot in Naomi. And sometimes we overlook the people that don't seem to be, you know, to just be less important in the story. But I think her story is impactful, especially as a wife, a woman, and a mother. You know what I'm saying? Someone who wants to mentor the next generation, or at least I try to mentor the next generation. So these things are important. You know what I'm saying? Can we pick up the reins when, when we feel that we, we've lost a lot, you know, can we go on? Can we kind of keep our family together? No, you will never take the place of that father, you know what I'm saying? But, but you have an important role to serve in your children's lives or in holding that family together. And sometimes the best thing you can do in holding your family together is to, to pray for them, to tell them God's truth in their life, you know what I'm saying? Whether they want to hear it or not, you know what I'm saying? Encouraging them. Sometimes it's pushing them out of the nest. Sometimes it's encouraging to go, you know, go out, be independent, kind of just find your own life, you know what I'm saying? But we have to be able to, through through the Spirit of God, He will teach us and show us as mothers and as mentors um, and as a wife what we need to do when we need to do it. So... You know, so in releasing her two daughters, she returned back to uh, to return back to their families. I think that was very impactful. Um, what a great example of a woman, a wife, and a mother, and a widow. No matter how to, no matter how the dynamics of the core family changed, Naomi did not abandon her assignment as a maternal head. That's good. Yeah, so. <laughs> Look, how did he come back and say that's right. good? Because I listen. <laughs> so Ruth, you know, saying she, you know, she she received Naomi's the benefit of her guidance, of her instruction, and it, it ultimately led to her, the next in Ruth's life. So invest in someone else's life. Yes. So we see Naomi then as a wife. Yes. Watch that now. Mm -hmm. She was a wife because all of this will be a reflection and a deposit back to Ruth. Absolutely. She, I feel like we're saying a long time on this, but we want everyone to get it. She was a wife. Then she was a mother. mother. Mm -hmm. Two different roles. Exactly. exactly. Mothers, and, you know that. Wives, you know that. If you don't have children yet, you know you're not a, a mother yet, but you know how to be a wife or you're trying. All right. So she fulfilled the role of being a wife. Right. She a fulfilled mother. the role of being a mother. mother and then a mentor. But she but she also fulfilled the role of being a mentor yes, yes. to her daughter in law. Yes. She still embraced Ruth as her daughter. Absolutely. Even though the son was deceased. She even encouraged Ruth, go back to your life, to your people. Ruth said, No, there's something about you, mom. There's something about when I was married to your son, to and 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 uh, to, to your husband, my father in law, that made me want to follow you, to, I saw your lifestyle, even in a pagan land. You never treated me indifferent because I came from a different culture. Absolutely. Whoa. That's awesome. You didn't treat me different because my cultural background was different because I didn't believe in your God uh, immediately. Right. That's good. But then something about the way you served your God impacted my life because she said, your God will become my God. Mm -hmm. But someone to just say that, you know what? I'm not going back. It's one thing not to go back to your mm -hmm. homeland, but it's another thing not to worship what you're used to worshiping. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But then to say, you know what? Your God is going to become my God. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in that family, you know, with... um. Naomi, Ruth being exposed to the, that family of Naomi's, you know, her sons, her children, and maybe the way they worshiped and how they held their holy days. And their, it made an impact on her life to, to the point where she wanted to convert. I'm, I'm ready. You know I'm what I'm ready. saying? I'm yeah. ready yeah. to be what you are. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And know the God that you know. Yeah. So that's, that's powerful. So that's let's, powerful. let's, let's do this as a takeaway because there's more to this lesson. Absolutely. We don't want it to be all night. We want y'all to come back for part two next week when we talk about, uh, the health. 
you yeah. know. Um, we have to see that out of the mentoring, that's very important to see, mm -hmm. that we must do for others mm -hmm. what they cannot do for themselves. Yes, yes. yes. Mothers, fathers, mother-in-laws, father-in-laws, older sibling, husband, wife, do for each other that mentoring aspect. Do for each other what they cannot do for themselves. Pastor, that's what we're doing now Absolutely. as pastors Absolutely. And, and teaching our members and people that tune in. Absolutely. We're doing for you what you don't say, oh, I can teach you. I can get the word. We're, we're, come on. We're, we're deeper than we're, we're above that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about God has given us this assignment, this ministry. And there, there's a reason why you are the ones we teach because God would have us to do for you in the areas where as of yet, or to certain points, you weren't able to yes. do for yourself. Yes. I think you understand. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The Holy Ghost filled on. But Absolutely. you'd be surprised because we are speaking to a global audience. You just have to, the cl clarity is so important. It's Absolutely. so important. So do so you think we've kind of dealt with that investing, the yes. investment of a lifetime yes. that you do for, uh, you do it for others, what they cannot do for themselves, Absolutely. what they may not know to do for themselves until they can do for themselves. <laughs> so let's go to our second point. The threshing before the blessing. Wow. 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 Now, here we are. We're talking about your relationship. I want to pastor um, many men, and I'll let you talk about what the women say. Many men say, I want a woman with long hair. I want a woman with a cute complexion. I want a woman with, um, you know, certain thighs or, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> slim legs. And, and oh, y'all stop being deep. You know, I'm telling the truth. You know, I, I don't want a tall woman. I don't want a woman taller than me and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What do women say, Pastor? Uh, for the women, I guess they say they want them tall, dark, and handsome, or they want them light and slender. I'm tall. And light and <laughs> slender. <laughs> um, you know, good hair. Um, someone that's going to, you know, it was there. Take, <laughs> someone that's going to, I guess, take care of my, take care of me, or you know, what I'm saying someone want them to be their sugar daddy. You know, mm. so, you know, this day, the definition of what women want is so watered down is just really pathetic. But anyway, <laughs> pathetic. It's really, it's really pathetic. Pathetic. you didn't give the women a break. I didn't call them men pathetic. You called them sisters pathetic. <laughs> Oh, well, at least excuse. Yeah. We got it. We got yes. it. We understand. I don't mean to offend anybody, but come on. The point that we're trying to make here is that Ruth didn't just go to Bethlehem. She didn't make the journey right. with Naomi and then just sit there. Exactly. And then after exactly. a while, complain. This one, I gave up yeah. Moab for this. Mm -hmm. This little dust bowl, this little mm -hmm. hick town. We're talking about Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. You know, these Hebrew people with their invisible God religion. Yeah. You didn't, you, hear, you didn't hear any complaining, but this is where Naomi's mentoring ship came in because she guided and directed her. You know, this is now, you're in Naomi, Ruth was now in Naomi's territory, in her country, in her customs. Things that Naomi knew about her customs that Ruth did not know. So she was the one to direct her and to guide her, even with going to glean off, you know, going to the threshing floor and gleaning the wheat. Right. She you know, told saying, Ruth how to, how do, to it. do it. Absolutely. What to do. Absolutely. Follow behind the reapers Absolutely. because they're going to leave enough for you to bring, get, get to, they're going to leave enough for you to bring back to the house for you and I to eat from. Absolutely. Mm. And also how to connect with Boaz who started out basically. Hold up. We don't go there yet because that, that's the, that's the icing on the cake. Okay. All right. Cause every woman wants her Boaz. <laughs> All right. But Ruth worked. That's the, Absolutely. writing notes. Absolutely. Just write that down. Ruth worked. Absolutely. She didn't sit back. I want my man to be this, that, and the other. Before her man found her, Ruth already found God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Before she found her man, I think I'm going ahead of myself, Absolutely. Pastor. Before Ruth found her man, she found God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right there in chapter one, she told Naomi, your God shall be my God. Mm -hmm. So she embraced Judaism. Absolutely. She embraced talking to Elohim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She embraced, and, and evidently a relationship started Absolutely. because God had Boaz, who was the one, the who owned the mm -hmm, field, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not just any Hebrew man, mm -hmm. not just any man from Bethlehem, but it had to be Boaz, who was of the, who Jesus would be of the lineage of Boaz, Boaz's great grandson, yeah, absolutely, David. Absolutely. My God. And it would be his grandmother who would be a Moabitess. No, yeah, his great, 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 great Ruth great was yeah, the, but great, we're going ahead of ourselves. Exactly, Ruth exactly. was the great grandmother. 
of King David, David. the great-grandmother. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's possible that they all lived in the same mm -hmm. lifetime. Mm -hmm. My, my great-grandmother lived for years. She did not pass, you know that, mm -hmm. till our adulthood. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Our children were born. Yes. They just, I don't think, I don't know how much they remember, but that's how far mm -hmm. those gen mm -hmm. five generations mm -hmm. in, in my family went. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Bishop, the other thing is, is that, you know, just to mention Boaz briefly, when, when Ruth, her first connection with Boaz was, um, his position was Kingsman Redeemer, which was a position that um, a family member took who was so that another family members, if their line was, you know, if there was no one there to continue the family name or to hold on to property, his position was to purchase the property for the family, for the family mm -hmm. and to also continue the family name so that that, fam that father's name does not die off. So mm -hmm. he had a, a, a different position at first before it even got to a romantic place with Ruth and Boaz. So right. sometimes the people that come to you, like you have to know what their position for and, and what their purpose is right. the, in your life at that time. Not to say mm -hmm. it won't lead, it can mm -hmm. lead to something, or and it may not lead to something, but just have an understanding of what their purpose is in your life. Right. Was so, I your kinsman redeemer? Jesus is my kinsman redeemer. <laughs> Was I? I'm not Jesus. Yeah. I'm just his representative. <laughs> But here in the earth was I, your kinsman redeemer. You can, you can continue on my family name. Do I need to? Oh, well, never mind. Okay, we don't want to. We don't. Want, okay, so I, I don't want to. Yes, I don't yes. want to compare okay, you yes. to. Should I compare you to Ruth? Yes, were, yes. were you the heathen that that I let? Oh my okay, we're lighten not lighten up, lighten up. Yeah, like come on, this point. is who lighten we. Up. You know, is this is who we are? They think That's we're doing this for the camera. No. You know, some people they just come on giggling. I'm like, nothing funny was said. <laughs> this, you got to live authentically. Exactly. Live your life authentically. You don't are. live like well, this the way they doing it. You know, you know, everyone. You don't hear us coming on. Come on, come on. Hello, hello. Come on in the room. If 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 I'm not linked into you, I won't hear you at all. Any, I'm sorry, I'm being personal. Pastor, let's finish this. Yes. The threshing before the blessing. So the blessing comes when you work first. And Absolutely. we're not just talking about holding down a job. Absolutely. But when you work on you. Work on your identity. Mm -hmm. Work on what you want to do with your life. Work on uh, uh, you being attractive mm -hmm. to the right person. Mm -hmm. And uh, come on, there's somebody for everybody. But there's folks out here that will just take anybody. And you know what they want? They will just take anything. True. That's given. True. All right, you're come on. You're you're yeah. grown and you're deep. So we're not. Ta we're going beyond that. We're talking about per a position for the right person. Absolutely. And God will relocate you. He will spiritually put you, allow you to go through things so that you can experience things just for you to really get connected, locked into God. Pastor, no one's saying amen it's on that. True. Amen. Bishop. Just amen. so that you can be locked into God. Because too many people, oh, when the Lord, I'm just going to serve God and the Lord's going to bless me with a mate. And then as soon as somebody come along, next thing, oh, I can't come to church for, the, you know, because I have to cook dinner for so-and-so. And, -so and I, I, we're going away and I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And and I think we need to watch that. I, I'm sorry. I come from the day when uh, single couples didn't take trips together, mm -hmm. overnight trips, mm -hmm. you know, just the two. Mm -hmm. You know, ain't no, come on, in this day, ain't nobody paying for two different rooms. So, you know, uh, you know and I know someone, well, we did. Okay, that's your business. And what did you do anyway? <laughs> anyway, you didn't go into the room. <laughs> there's always a comeback, so leave it alone. So, but the thing we need to look at is that um, when you work on you, when you work in fulfilling the will of God for your life, discover God. Mm -hmm. That's what we said it. Ruth met God before she met the Absolutely. man of God. Absolutely. Get to know God mm -hmm. before you get to know his sons or his daughters. Mm -hmm. And when you know God, mm -hmm. you will recognize that man is his Absolutely. son or that woman is his daughter. Absolutely. And then oh, God that's can position you in a place where you will, you will, uh, reap the benefits right. of, you know what I'm saying, your relationship with God first. Because mm -hmm. then when you have that relationship attack with God, then he can direct you into another relationship because he knows you can handle wow. it. Because he knows you can handle it. So okay. that just is awesome. But so, I think this generation, the problem is I think with this generation especially is that we just, our standards are just so low. You know what I'm saying? And so we are not able to correctly discern or recognize when 
uh, something is healthy for us uh, and when it's not. Um, we should really pursue pursue your own agenda. You know what mm. I'm saying? You want to bring pursue your own agenda mm. so that you have something to bring to the table. And I say this all the time in relationships. You know what I'm saying? And just like we used to go around and say, you know what I'm saying? It's like I get married, you know what I'm saying? Or this person comes into my life and they completely, just even even talking to like different women in the world, they still have this mindset that they need a man or, or the man needs a woman to complete them. Mm. But we have to remember that the Bible says that we are complete in, in him. him. Colossians. And that's one of my favorite scriptures. Mm. We are complete in God. We are whole as people, as Amen. a person. We may not act out our wholeness or walk in our wholeness, but we are. God made us complete. He didn't make Adam half person. He didn't make Eve a half person, but he made them both individuals completely whole. Mm -hmm. And that's how God made us. And mm -hmm. so we have to remember that you don't need anybody to, com to complete your life. If you tap into it, you're already complete. Tap into God and he'll that's show good. you how complete you are. That's good. I know we're getting long, so we're, 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 we're not going to be longer. But just understand that where Ruth was gleaning, mm -hmm. where she had to lay out the on that gleaning for, mm -hmm. it's only four chapters. Read it for yourself. Mm -hmm. She had to work, but it became her field of favor. Mm -hmm. yes. So you never yes. know where God would have you that it will become your field of favor. Mm -hmm. It could be a certain job. Well, why do I have to do this? If God put you there, do it. Mm -hmm. Boaz is coming. Good That's God it. Almighty. <laughs> Boaz, Ruth might be right there. So see the field not as labor, not as toil, but see the field as favor. It's yes. a field of favor, mm -hmm. a it's favor, a field. favor, mm -hmm. because God is calling all of us. Through this story of Ruth, God is calling all of us to commitment. There's a call to commitment. Naomi, mother-in-laws, the, the mothers, fathers, father-in-laws, be committed mm -hmm. to help the next generation. The next generation. Mentor the, the next, next generation. Next generation. Yeah. You don't have to tell, all right, we know you don't want to tell family secrets, but can you tell them how to save money? Can you tell them how to go out and represent themselves? And let's, we have to go here, Pastor, and if they don't hear you, Arguing doesn't make them listen any, anymore. Absolutely, absolutely. So just do like pre what we do as preachers. We cannot make anyone get saved. Our duty is to preach and teach the word of God. Mm -hmm. We All we do is deposit seeds. We're, we're the, the person that goes up there and sow the seed. We put the seed in the ground. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So mentors, mothers, fathers, mother-in-laws, father-in-laws, just... Plant the seed. Mm -hmm. It's not your job to make them like mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. It's not your job for them. It's not their job to do everything you want them to do. Mm -hmm. Just plant the seed. I'm sure I don't do everything my mother wants me to do. What about you? No, no, I don't. But yeah. Pastor, one thing is for sure. Mm -hmm. Our mothers planted seed, seed yes. in yes. us. Absolutely. Planted seed in us. Mm -hmm. So be committed as mentors to the to the ones that you mentor, even if they're not, if you don't see the fruit of it, be committed. Absolutely. Be committed to it. Absolutely. We need to close, Pastor. We've been talking a long time. So our final point is flirting with the right one. And I know you already went into Boaz, but I was trying to hold, slow the chariot down. Slow down, chariot. But flirting with the right one. Flirting with the right one. Mm -hmm. So it's all right. We said flirting, not mm -hmm. sexing, mm -hmm. not flirting, sex texting, <laughs> all of that, right, not exactly. sleeping, right. flirting. Absolutely. That means it's all right to let them know I'm looking at you. Absolutely. Absolutely. What people don't realize in this passage of scripture that what, um, how Naomi instructed Ruth to go lay, uncover the feet of Boaz and lay at his feet was actually, um, a tradition, something that they did. Hebrew back tradition. Then. It was something they did back then. And it, they said that even in, um, Certain Arabic countries now they still do it. Mm -hmm. So and it is it was it was custom for divorced women or Middle women, Eastern uh, customs, widow, divorced women or widow women to do that. You know what I'm saying when they were um, kind of looking at another person, but they did it in a respectful way. It was not anything she would not Naomi would not direct it, Ruth. Um, in doing something, if it was something that was dishonorable, so this was a part of their custom for her to uncover the feet. Um, she went to lay at the feet of Boaz and uncover him. And the thing was, is if he saw her there um, in the middle of the night to, to extend some of his cover to place over her, mm -hmm. meaning that's a sign of favor. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that was, so that's how that went. So that wasn't, so she was flirting and she was flirting for the right reasons. Right, so, exactly. Um, you know. she, and she wasn't, he, Boaz was not the only male 
out there in the field. Absolutely, absolutely. Or at the har during the absolutely. harvest. He was not the only man out there working. Right. So you have to know how to bat your eye, if you will, at the right one. <laughs> at the one that God is saying. Yeah. Bo uh, uh, Naomi, excuse me, Ruth. Ruth didn't go out and say, oh, I like him. What's his name, Boaz? Right. No. The mentor. Mm-hmm. Directed her. The mentor Absolutely. told her how to position herself. Absolutely. Get out there and work. Then get out there and, and follow these customs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? There's certain things that, oh, that's what y'all did back in y'all day, mom. Well, it still might it work works. today. Right. It might right. keep you safe. Right. It might help you to stay saved. Absolutely. Because uh, undressing and uh, giving what you should only give to your spouse is not the answer. Mm -hmm. And it's not a guarantee. Absolutely. There are females that got pregnant. He'll marry me now. And he married someone else. Mm -hmm. Or they feel, oh, now I, or, or, you know, well, the Lord delivered me from fornication. No, you just got married. Absolutely. You didn't allow God to show you that you can be delivered from fornication, which is sex before marriage. So here's the things we need to, un to understand. God is, is give you the okay to flirt, N not, not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We're talking about flirting. Flirting is no more than getting the attention, mm -hmm. getting mm -hmm. the attention mm -hmm. of someone else. And the original uh, in doing this and her instructing her to do this wasn't even so much so much for, um, you know, the end agenda. The end the end scenario was, you know, marriage. You know what I'm saying? But really also was to preserve property and preserve a family name as being because that was his position as a kinsman redeemer. But there was a one that was before him. That Boaz went to and said, "Look, you know, this is what's happening. Naomi, you know, uh, Naomi has to sell the property, and you know, there's not going to be any kind of, you know, um, lasting heritage. The family name is going to die out. I'm going to give you opportunity as being the first king, kingsman redeemer, to go and, you know, buy the property. You know, what I'm saying, and then by the way, there she has a um, daughter-in-law." Ruth, you're going to have to, you know, take also uh, ownership of her as well. He was like, no, you know what? I don't want, you know, I already got my own stuff going on. So you can take this. You well, can he have was, this. He was, well, there was a little bit more. He was mm -hmm. ready to marry Ruth. Mm -hmm. Boaz was not the only interest. Mm -hmm. You know, Boaz was the one that Ruth was positioned to uh, catch the attention mm -hmm. of, flirt with. Mm -hmm. But flirt, catch the attention. That's what we're saying. Flirting, catching the attention of. But there was another one who's, like you said, another male who's a family member as well. Mm -hmm. He saw Ruth first mm -hmm. and tried to, mm -hmm. you know, begin relationship with Ruth. So in order for Boaz, there was a ceremony, a Hebrew ceremony, in order for Boaz to become the husband mm -hmm. or the main squeeze, he had to, the other gentleman, and forgive me for not calling his name, the other man had to give all, uh, take off his, I think it's the shoe. right shoe. Yeah. And, and and lay it at his feet. And that meant he gave up his that was right. legal or fair full right. right. That was legal. Uh, it was the, the it was right. right. His right time. because he's he was trying mm -hmm. to talk to her first. His right and, and whatever he wanted, you know, her in his life for mm -hmm. his wife, carry on family tradition, etc. Give it up so that Boaz. And how many ways, times, and people have God disconnected you from? And they had to let you go and give you up so that God could place you with the right person, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. position for the right person. Listen, we pray that you were blessed by this. I know we said a lot. That I know we said a lot. But our final thing that we just want to share with you is that love is more than kissing. Mm -hmm. Love is communication. Love is relationship. Love is feeling. Love is knowledge. Mm -hmm. Love is experience. Mm -hmm. Love is is taking the dare, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. going into the unknown. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's the romance of redemption. Know that, Pastor, you help complete my life. Mm -hmm. I pray. I'm waiting on you to say, and you help complete my life. You help complete my life. Was anyone timing that? Was that like <laughs> an hour? I think that I'm was like an hour and I a just day. Said I'm complete. In yeah, but God. you didn't say it just then. You, we know you're complete in God. <laughs> Courtney, shut up right there. It's on the tip of your tongue. Okay, but God gave you a husband. Yes, he did. Okay, we're going to turn the camera around and y'all start ministering to us. Please start ministering to us. We we took you this far. Now you take us around. Woo. Yes, yes, you complete my life. Two hours, two days. Okay. So, 
You know, I, and I was going to take off for dinner tonight. I think we'll just have so, uh, uh, hot dogs tonight. Okay, so ro the romance of redemption. Know that a part of your relationship is knowing God. Yes. And, what, and the Bible teaches us in the New Testament that husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church. Amen. Jesus is our redeemer. We're not looking for Boaz. Right. Boaz is not another name for Jesus. All right. So what we need to do now is to really be that fulfillment mm -hmm. in each other's life. Mm -hmm. I am proud to say, Pastor, and we've shared this, this audience know this. We shared this plenty of times. Pastor and I were childhood sweethearts. Uh, late in high school, we we went our separate ways, and um, Pastor came back to. She even left the church. Yeah. Pastor got pregnant out out out, out of wedlock, mm -hmm. right? All right, that was then. I mean, she was a what an eighteen year old girl. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. you know how old she is now. All right, I got my comeback, so I'm good. We, we good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so she was she was uh, a young girl then, and. Uh, you know, we're not going to say the child was a mistake. That's our first child. Right. All right. All right. So she uh, had a child and uh, she came back to Christ. Uh, during those days, people felt guilty about their sin. I said those days. Conviction. People now, they just there was come. Something called conviction. Conviction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People now just do it. They, well, I did it with her. I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. Neither was she. But that's not what you said right. then. You came to, back to God for yourself. You acknowledge your sin. Read, uh, what's that, that, that Psalm of David? He didn't say, well, Lord, I'm not the only one that, you know, you take, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Right. No, he prayed for himself. Right. He said, against you have I, not against you have you, we. You he didn't even I mention should. Bathsheba as part of it. As far as David was concerned, he was the one that messed up and yes, couldn't have done things yes, different or yes, better. Yes. Own it, own it, mm -hmm. so that God can deliver you. So pastor owned her mistake. We're not saying the child a mistake. The act was a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because when you're young, you feel your love or you just give in to emotions mm -hmm. and, or, and you don't have the knowledge you would have later. Is, did I say that good Absolutely, enough? Yes. All right. I don't want to tell your story, but the Lord, uh, you know, uh, reclaimed her. Mm -hmm. She came back to the church, came back to Christ. I said all that to say this, that uh, when she came back, we wanted to be back in each other's life. Mm -hmm. And I think 30 some years later, what are we going on? 34 years. Yes. 34 years later, Pastor, mm -hmm. I don't think we made a mistake there. No. Absolutely. Hearts may have been broken with our decision. Mm -hmm. We know some people that didn't even want us to be together. True. Well, 34 years, children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Tell them we're not supposed to be together. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> tell our successes. Tell the people that look up to us. Mm -hmm. Hello? Was a perfect marriage? Whose is a perfect marriage? Who has a perfect marriage? I know others are acting like theirs is okay and they never did anything wrong. But here's the power of love. When you can cover, you said Ruth covered mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boaz's feet. Mm -hmm. When you can cover, we didn't say condone. Mm -hmm. When you can cover, sure. when you can love, mm -hmm. when you can strengthen, when you can support. How can, Pastor, you and I accept the love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. if we can't do that for each other? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. One thing, and I'm and I, I'm just very apparent and very open. That's just how I, I just believe in that. I don't believe in being a fake person. Even with being married 34 years, even during like everything that we're going through, I don't know about you. Like I said, I have been really seeking God to just really just reveal some things, you know, to me about me, you know what I'm saying? And, and he has really been just really taking it back, you know, wow. saying stuff from childhood, things like that. Bring it to my attention. It's like, look, it's time for me to deal with some of this stuff mm. that has been laying low or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But even with coming um, regarding our relationship and stuff like that. The Lord showed me just, just some areas where even as being a wife, just being, sometimes we can just be selfish mm. about certain things that we do or want or our expectations and wow. stuff. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to say that 34 years later, guess what? It's a learning process still as we mature and we go through different things in our life, we still have to be in a place of learning each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I hope that my husband's that way about me. Just continue to, to try to learn me Amen. as I continue to try to learn him. And I'm not Amen. perfect at everything, but I'm trying to sure. get better. Sure. And that's what I said to him. I said, I'm trying to be a better wife and I am trying to be a better mm -hmm. wife. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm doing I, that Hold up. We, through prayer. We have to make sure this sounds well. right. Mm -hmm. It's not just you working on you. Right. It's also me working on me. Right. And, and together we work 
on and with each other. Absolutely. She's working on her. I'm working on me. Mm -hmm. Together we mm -hmm. work with each other. Mm -hmm. There's a success. Absolutely. Besides true love and Christ being in our lives. Absolutely. There's a success of our and marriage. And sometimes you have to be able to call out yourself and say, you know what, self, you're a trip. You know what I'm saying? And you got to realize, and you got to allow God. And I'm like, I'm always in a place where God, please show me me. I always want you to always tell me the things about me that either, you know what I'm saying, uh, that don't please you so that I can make sure that I work on those things. Because God, ultimately, I want to be pleasing in your sight. Amen. And being a wife, you know what I'm saying? This is this is my God here on earth. You know what I'm saying? He is the, he is the um, example of God on earth. Wow. And that's what marriage is. You know wow. what I'm saying? So I have to be able to treat who God has placed my life as his wow. representative in my life as my husband. I have to treat him the way I would treat God. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I can't treat and vice I have versa. my personal it's relationship not a with God. Street. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That is way up here. And then I'm a trip as a mm -hmm. wife. I'm a trip as a mother. Wow. And I just can never get it together. Right. You know what I'm saying? It can't be like that. You know right. what I'm saying? I have to, he has to, you know, everything that I love and respect about God has to come through in how I show it through my wow. husband. Wow. So. And we learn from each other. That's the beauty of it. We learn from each other. We affirm each other. Mm -hmm. So we thank God for that. Listen, I know we went a little long on this, but this is so needed in the body of Christ. Absolutely. It has to be taught. And we're not the only ones. We know that. But we have to do our part. So our prayers that always we're saying what's not already written, what's already being said. Right. If not, we could have just told you, buy this book. We have books. Trust me. And, and we could have just recommended that to you. Uh, Pastor, both of I read, you know, we yes. study yes. and all of that. And, um, but listen, it's all about being positioned for the right person. Stop looking at the time clock. Stop listening to your body clock. Stop looking at everyone else that got a friend or married before you. All of them really aren't happy. Mm -hmm. They're just married. Mm hmm. Mm. Okay, so there, there's some work to be done. You cannot compare yourself to other people's lives. Pastor, I would not want to exchange our life and our relationship for other people's lives. Me either. I, I don't, Me either. because I know what we build. Absolutely. I, we yeah, are friends. Yeah. See, one thing we have, we were friends first. Yes. See, we didn't go into, I, I'm getting a certain age, I need a woman, or, she, or she's saying, I need a man. No, mm -hmm. we were friends first. And even when we got married, we still had to learn each other. Absolutely. Because ready for this? We never lived together until we got married. <laughs> That's it. I'm not That's going it. to apologize. We were raised a certain way. And that is what helped qualifies us mm -hmm. to be the leaders of other mm -hmm. people. Listen, we said a whole lot. And we want to invite you. We have a great discussion that follows our uh, living devotions. It's called Midweek Talk Back. And right now, uh, members and partners of the Perfecting Life Center are the ones who are privy right now. Uh, this is not the first time you heard me say it, to and have access to that conversation. It's still an online conversation. And what we do is we sit back and let the uh, audience talk. Mm -hmm. And we just keep the train on the track. Or it also allows us to share things that we didn't have enough time to pour into what we teach Absolutely. in Living Devotions, Absolutely. but we pour mm -hmm. in the uh, mm -hmm. midweek talk back. It's going to be open up to you real soon. So we just want you to stay in touch. Mm -hmm. I can tell you now, there are some people from Holy Temple who've already been on since day one. So, <laughs> you know, they, they follow the Facebook, they follow, they hear that they keep their ear to the ground mm -hmm. or either to heaven. And we don't turn people away. We've also had members that say, well, I have, I have someone I'm trying to lead to Christ and I, I'm told they have to wait. No, we will never tell Tell someone you cannot be a part of the conversation that's going to give you a greater understanding of who Jesus is. We will never do that. So if you're interested, you need to contact us and let us know. It will. We are still feeling it. We're not saying feeling out. We're still trying it out. We're mm -hmm. still uh, out and it's getting better and better. We have an awesome online administrator, our own mother, Lorna, yes. and she is our online administrator. And I'm telling you, God is just so awesome. He places the right people in the ministry for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. So we honor God. And our prayer to you, you've heard us talk long enough tonight. Our prayer for you is that you will grow in grace and in the knowledge, knowledge of our Lord, Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Follow us next week as we continue this great series called Live Your Life Authentically. We will be talking in our next episode about health. Uh, yes. 
Heart health. Yes, I'm passionate about it. Not just physical, okay? So it's physical and spiritual. Right. Am I correct? Yes. Your yes. emotional connection yes. in your yes. heart. Yes. So we're dealing with heart health. Mm -hmm. Too many of us will walk around and that heart is working too hard. Yes. yes. Because we're putting our attention on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to deal with heritage. Yes. Oh, my God. And you know that's going to yeah, be a good one. You, that's you know you. that's my passion right yes. there. So we're going to deal with heritage. I might have to pull out um, the illusion of freedom, my God. <laughs> the redemption of Ephraim's nation, wow, the redefinition good. of the Woo! Adams family. Yes. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know, and the, and I, I can hear Avenger Fowler now <laughs> shouting out some other ones yes, that I forgot. Yes, yes. All right. So there's your shout out, everyone. Do the will of God. We love you. And until the next time, God bless you. Bye-bye.